Hey, what's going on? This is uh, Pastor Aaron and Katie, and uh, we've got uh, our incredible friends. We, Brandon and Meredith from C3 Fort Worth, and Josh and Morgan from C3 Kansas City. And uh, I don't know, we kind of came up with this crazy idea of getting together and yeah. um, talking about uh, the the real kind of incredible opportunity we have tonight to celebrate Good Friday, to talk about communion, um, to kind of reflect uh, on our own journeys and maybe share some of our own perspectives yeah. and revelations on uh, the incredible power of this, this night and what it symbolizes and represents maybe for us individually, for mm -hmm. us as pastors, for us as parents, uh, for us as friends uh, even. And so we're excited tonight to, uh, to just share with you uh, maybe just a little bit of a chat around the subject of Good Friday, communion, mm -hmm. friendship, Jesus, um, and anything else that comes up in the next few moments as we yeah. spend some time together. So guys, why don't you uh, say hello and, and uh, welcome everybody. <laughs> Brandon, you oh. should go first. Oh, you Good guys? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Brandon and Mayor of Fort Worth. And uh, we're excited to talk about communion and really the whole yeah. Easter weekend. I, I think it's um, obviously in a weird season. We're in strange, difficult season for some where we're all kind of in our house kind of sorting out all of this. Normally we'd be in church doing communion or yeah. taking part in Good Friday service or um, or even doing Easter Sunday. And so right. uh, kind of a unique circumstance for sure. And I think the conversation around Good Friday and Easter and everything is, uh, is a good one to have. And I think probably much more rich than we allow it to be at times. So yeah. Yeah, we're excited about it. Yeah. Super excited. Yeah. 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 That's a good, yeah. Hey, we're Josh and Morgan in Kansas City. And uh, we, we just love these two couples yeah. and so grateful for their friendship and for this opportunity to break bread and share a cup over Zoom together. So hopefully everybody who's watching this has a couple hours to, to spare as we talk about the whole Easter weekend. <laughs> <Everything> right. that... <laughs> Definitely have time to go to the grocery store and get yeah. your wine and crackers. Yes. <laughs> just, yeah, you, know, you, you would actually. These yeah, crackers. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's okay, fun, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for sure. So yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, we will take communion and we'd love for you to join in. Yeah. 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 If you're watching. Yeah, I think that, that's our goal, right? Is to, to have a, a kind of an open conversation, mm -hmm. maybe read some scripture, uh, but obviously give everyone an opportunity to join us in partaking right. of communion together. And, um, you know, what a better opportunity than tonight to be able to, to do that. I, I love obviously that we identified that, you know, this is kind of uh, unprecedented times, right? I mean, we're, Right. We're, uh, we're doing this together via Zoom, but yet there's still so much joy. There's so much intentionality. Mm -hmm. There's so much opportunity uh, for us. And so no matter where you're kind of tuning in from or you're watching or engaging with us, um, one, we're just thankful that you took a few moments to just kind of sit in on a conversation we thought we'd have, uh, but also maybe even uh, participate in this uh, most incredible uh, gift that I believe we have to, to break bread to share a cup and to just remember, reflect on what yeah, Jesus did for us. And so I thought I'd just start with a, a pastor of scripture. And maybe we can kind of just go from there and see how the kind of conversation develops. It's funny when you get three pastors together, you're kind of like, what's your talking point? What's your talking point? And, uh, and I think what's beautiful though about this friendship, because that's what this is. This is we're we're all pastors, but we're 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 not just pastors. We're friends. Yeah. yeah. Um. We're, we we spend time together in the woods. Uh. We we go on vacations together. We we do whatever we can to carve out extra time around conferences. Uh. Together to just spend time fellowshipping, encouraging, championing. I feel like your kids are my kids, and I'd love for you to take my kids anytime you want. We, no. Uh, uh, mm -mm, no. We'll send uh, ours to you. That's yeah. 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 <laughs> yours, yours can babysit uh, uh, ours. So yes. yeah, actually, that's, that's true. Right. We should that's just right. get them a, a, an Airbnb somewhere, and they can just babysit all the kids. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just go. Uh, they're all not right. Uh, but um, let me read this uh, passage of scripture out of the book of Luke, uh, chapter twenty-two, and. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the, the beginning or the end. It just have, maybe just a, a starter of conversations. But uh, in verse 14, it says, And when the, when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. 
For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In verse 20, he says, and likewise, the cup after they had eaten saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And I'll, I love that text. There's, there's so many, you know, there's so many, there's so much depth to it. There's richness to it. Obviously uh, there's, there's a lot of context to it as well. Um, but if I would just ask you, Brandon and Mayor first, if just what jumps out of you right away from that text, when you, when you hear it, when you kind of, you know, di di dissect it a little bit. Oh, that's a lot of pressure, man. I, um, pass. No, I want to hear. <laughs> no. I was banking. I was banking on the rabbi talking first. Yeah. 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 For those of you who don't know, Josh has officially been nicknamed in our in our little group the rabbi um, because he's just so smart. I mean, he just really is. Like Brandon, I get all of our material from him. Um, it's kind of easy now. He's the most like Jesus. He's the most like Jesus. His hair is actually longer than mine. It just it's just pulled up really well. Um, <clears throat> oh, did not know that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah, Brothers. Josh, it's all yours. Yeah, okay, so that was a pass. That really was a pass. Oh man, that's funny. Um, well, pass it back. As I was, as you were reading that, it was, it was. Uh, I think we often forget that that communion began as a meal, and that the mm. Passover was a meal to be uh, experienced with those closest to you, mm. and um, and so they wouldn't just spill the blood but they would partake in in the lamb and yeah. it would become a meal where people gathered around together <clears throat> and so we we continue that same sort of language around the lord's table that it is yeah. the meal um but now instead of a a lamb we have the perfect lamb who yeah. we are partaking with and partaking in and um and as we i think we we can we can quickly shift to thinking communion in a very um, ritualistic perspective, which I don't have any problem with ritual. Um, right. This is what this began as was a, a yearly ritual to remember what God had done, and so now we have the opportunity every time we gather, whether mm -hmm. with via Zoom or in a church building, um, to remember what it is He's done. And one of the things. Right. Um, uh, one of the great uh, uh, theologian that I listened to, he said the, the worst sin in the Old Testament was to forget. Wow. Um, wow. wow. It was constantly, the, the prophets are constantly reminding the people of Israel, don't forget where you've come from. Mm -hmm. Don't forget yeah. what your God has done for you. Don't, mm -hmm. uh, this is why we do these, these, uh, these festivals is to remember so that your yeah. children remember, so that your children's children remember, and it's generation, mm -hmm. generation, and generation. Wow. And so um, we, we at C3 Kansas City have begun to take communion weekly. Wow. And, and it had started more of just like, hey, we'll do it around Easter, we'll do it around uh, different, different times. And um, I think we, we can put it on the shelf and put it on a thing of like, um, it's, maybe it'll lose its importance or it'll lose its, its power if we do it every week. Wow. Not the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, that we, we've just been hearing from people say, I didn't realize how much I missed taking communion every mm. week. Yeah. Um, wow. So it's a constant reminder that we can uh, step into. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it's beautiful. That's really good. It's beautiful. Brandon, you want to add now? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know. I think I think you're absolutely right. I think that the table is significant. I actually I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I feel like people are taking communion more now in this moment yeah. than maybe before. Mm -hmm. And I love the significance of that. I think for a lot of our years as pastors, we've we've always encouraged people, and and I, not to say that it doesn't happen in the temple and the, the sacrament of doing it as the as the gathered body of Christ, which is really important. Um, that is. Uh, important but but i also think that for us we've always challenged people mm -hmm. hey like take communion at home like make this yeah. something right. that you yeah. remember 
yeah. what's going on. I mean, I yeah. think the strength of tr Jewish tradition is that there is a regular, consistent. It's never been an issue that uh, that there was um, that there was some kind of ritual or mm -hmm. regularity right. in what you do. It's that when you do it, you if you lose the spirit of it. And I think wow. that's uh, the, hope yeah. is, the hope is in, even in communion that we're. Uh, giving ourselves the space and opportunity to give our, our God the room and give God space to do what he needs to do. So yeah. I love the table part of it. That's a significant thing for us, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, when you think about who was at the table, when yeah. he taught, the, 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 mm -hmm. when he first took communion with the people, mm -hmm. was it, who was at the table, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you right. knew one was going to betray you. You knew one that was going to sell you out. That you knew one, I mean, and yet you were still willing to do it. I mean, I think that should be uh, the for us. It's not just the guys in the room that did great, but the guys in the room that didn't, and yet he still yeah. did it with them, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. That's so yeah. good. I, I love, um, Josh, you, you know, you kind of alluded to this, right? Because this isn't just, this isn't just a moment, right? Jesus was like, oh, I've got a new idea, right? This was the, the completion or this was the fulfillment of the promise, right? The Passover was a celebration all the way, dated all the way back to, to when the Israelites were set free from Egypt, right? And God kind of commanded them through Moses to, to do this in remembrance of, of what, is, what I've done for you, right? This celebration of freedom. And so now, you, you know, you, you use the word the perfect lamb, and that's what Jesus is, right? He is the perfect lamb of God. And, and so when that sacrifice was done, it was the fulfillment, the completion of that promise. And so I love that, that you use the, the language of teaching mm. and reminding our families, those that we're responsible for in our communities, one another, right? These commandments, these, these directives, these encouragements, these celebratory moments, because it brings about reflection. It brings about remembrance. It brings about revelation. It brings about freedom. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much depth to that thought of just not just taking it for a moment, but mm -hmm. remembering this is a, this is a sequence of moments that mm -hmm. has, has led us all to right. this very moment right now. And then, you know, Brandon, to your, your thought on, you know, the idea that Jesus, I love, I love it at the beginning. It says, it says, uh, and when the hour came, he reclined at the table. Mm. I, I love the word reclined. It's a posture, right? You think about, you think about Jesus. I, I just imagine Jesus like, <laughs> like just, you know, reclined at the table. And like you said, he yeah. was, he was reclined at the table with his friends, but he was also yeah. amongst a betrayer. He, he, he was amongst he was amongst sinners. He, he was amongst tax collectors before. He was amongst probably business guys who were cheating on their taxes or cheating on their, their employees or cheating on the way. I mean, whatever the case may be, you could imagine yeah. that, that there, was this, there was this reality. But then it, it, it shows us the posture of Jesus was always in a place of intentionality. It was always in a posture of acceptance. It was always in a posture of inclusion, mm -hmm. no matter what the, the background, no matter what the, the, the circumstance, no matter what the record would show yeah. about a person, past, present, and future, uh, right? Because we know that his betrayer yeah. was past, present, and still future to be done. And mm -hmm. so I love both of those perspectives and, and the importance of them in this, mm -hmm. this narrative, this this beautiful moment that, that we're having together. Yeah. It's just a bunch of friends sitting around a digital table, right? A, 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 a table that is built around Zoom. Thank you, Jesus, yeah. for technology. <laughs> I'm just I'm wondering which one of you is the betrayer. I'm just curious. <laughs> is this like Clue? Like who Can done we all it? Just point? Like who yeah. done it? <laughs> oh it, was, uh, it was Morgan in, uh, in Brandon and Mare's dining room with the coffee pot. <laughs> <laughs> with the oh my goodness I think too we've all kind of been challenged a little bit in this uh season of all of us in some way being forced to be in our own homes which I know yeah. that sounds crazy that you're forced to be in your mm -hmm. home but uh you know that there are certain things that when we consider church or aspects of church or elements of church like corporate worship corporate taking of communion and mm -hmm. all these things that we go oh well that's just for church on Sunday. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But really, I love in this passage that he was relaxed with his friends. Mm. And it was just one more lesson that he was able to teach them. And it was one more moment that he was able to be with them. And so to me, I'm going, man, if, if we're not doing it at our home more around the table with our friends, wow. and it's not necessarily the 
ritual of communion, but it's what Josh said in the beginning about remembering. Right. Remember what God has done. Do not forget. Mm -hmm. And with mm -hmm. a thankful, grateful posture, um, man, it's just, if I'm just waiting for the time that we do it in a church on Sunday, once mm -hmm. a quarter or once a week, like, am I just going through yeah. the motions, wow. you know, or am mm -hmm. I really grateful, really thankful for what God's doing yeah. and has done? Yeah. That, that's kind of the, that's kind mm -hmm. of the, Josh, you, you, you could speak to this probably, but right. The, the true definition of this is Eucharist. And then in the depth of that word is actually, uh, is the, is translated into celebration, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong and I would appreciate the correction. Uh, which tells me that this isn't about uh, this isn't about a a morning moment. Right, right, right. This isn't about uh, they're like they're like checking they're fact checking Look it here. Right. Right. Look it up. You're like, no, we're we're texting a friend. <laughs> yeah, Can phone I phone a friend? friend. But, Is this from this call? <laughs> uh, um, but right, but that's the, the, and I think that's what Jesus even said. He says, yeah. "I earnestly desire to do this with you. I was zealous to do this with you. I was." I was excited. I was exuberant for the opportunity to do this with you before mm -hmm. I suffer. Am I wrong? Morgan, come on. To oh, your um, You're texting. No, you are phoning your friends. Not good, Ellen, especially the bread. We're looking <laughs> for uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yes. Thanksgiving. Celebration. Yes. Look at that. Oh, wow. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday because of that very reason. It's a celebration, right? And that's what this reminds me of. It's a celebration. It's a, it's an opportunity. There's, there's, there is rich sadness to it because we're stopping to remember that a man, both human, both divine was willing to pay such a price for us, but that's the beauty of the grace that's in that story. Um, but that we can celebrate it. We can, we can be, we can lean into it with a bit of, with a posture of joy, with a bit of zeal as he uses the word earnestly, which is, you know, defined by zealous or zeal in, in its context. So, so I, I just love that even in this con, you know, this context, we're a bit sovereign, we're a bit intentional. You know, there's a bit of a, you know, there's a bit of a, a holy moment here, but there's still a sense of joy. There's a bit of laughter. There's a bit of human. You know, a child is on the back of the screen somewhere, probably like waving, like I'm not going to bed. I'm not going to bed. I got a dog that's upstairs trying to get out. Like yeah. it's that's life. <laughs> Uh, but that's the beauty of it is that we're, we're able to do life even in these times like this. Yeah. Come on, Mary. I know you got some, some, something there you want to. I have technology issues all the time when I try <laughs> to unmute myself. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I, uh, Katie, I was stuck on what you said earlier about just, it can be this, uh, or it, it can seem to be like a ritual, but it's not, mm. it's not a ritual. Mm. And I remember when I was young growing up, I wasn't, we didn't go to church regularly. Um, it was very occasionally, but every time I went, I always felt the weight of communion when they would take communion. I kind of felt like as a kid, I would shrink back because I was so unsure wow. because when they spoke about it, and this was in a Baptist church and I love the Baptist churches, <laughs> do not get me wrong, but it, it made me feel like, wow, this is a serious thing that they're talking about. This yeah. is, this oh. is a real, I mean, even as a kid, I remember thinking that. And so growing up and, and learning what communion was and what, what it meant, what, what the body, the bread and the, the mm. blood, and the, you mm. know, the, it, it was so significant to me because I finally pieced it together. It wasn't that it was serious. It was, and it is serious in a sense, but it was, it's a great, great gift. And yeah. they didn't take it lightly then yeah. and I think that's something that's a great gift and it's not to be taken lightly mm -hmm. so kudos to you kansas city for doing it weekly in your church yes. i think it's absolutely oh, amazing but there was this um we we did a series early on called temple to table in fort yeah. worth yeah just last month um, yeah. just last month gosh it seems like now seems like a long time ago yeah <laughs> oh, gosh oh, my it's, gosh it's, that was a year ago now i think today's no, it's just last month. Which one? Um, oh, Surrey's talking to me, guys. Goodness. Um, <laughs> but we, you know, studied a lot about the early church and how they, the early church was built. And, and it talks about the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came. And we all know the scripture. But then it goes on into Acts 2, 42. It says the believers form a community out mm, of I love that. Um, uh, the Holy Spirit moving. It says all the believers... Um, 2.42 says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the sharing in meals and to prayer. Wow. And I just love how it just 
lays it out for us right yeah. there yeah. in yeah. one, yeah. one yeah. line scripture that they devoted themselves to each other, to fellowship, to community, to the table, and to breaking of bread. Yeah, yeah. so good. Yeah, it's beautiful. In some ways, I, maybe it's like taking us back there. This all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, home to home is going to be the new uh, the new recipe for success. Yes. <laughs> Speak to that, Brennan, a little bit, because I think, you know, in the context of community, in the context of Jesus, um, don't get you started, is that what you said? Yeah. Come on, preacher. No, we got I, the rabbi, I, we got the preacher, I, I, I just, the face. Yeah, no, I, I, I want to hear, I want to hear, uh, what's, Morgan. is there a, a female version of rabbi, Josh? Because I was going to ask Morgan. To show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what is that? Rabina? Yeah. I don't, Regina. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I look, I don't need to take long. I just think home to home, temple to table. And, and we've talked about this. What, the temple and the table are meant to mirror each other. Uh, Josh would say, you know, we're going from the Lord's house to your house. Uh, but they are both meant to be uh, both in different perspectives or maybe even different purposes, uh, mm -hmm. but with the same heart. And uh, so when I break bread in the temple or in the church with the body of Christ, there's a coming together there's a um, an anointing there's a, a special thing that god does in those moments uh, and then wow. we deal with my family uh the same thing i mean how many families are sitting down more at the table during all of right. this Absolutely. Come on, man. Yeah. Weeks, months years and what mm -hmm. god's doing in those moments to heal and i and i do think that's mm -hmm. part of communion there there should be a healing there should yeah. be a restoration one of my favorite mm -hmm. definitions of uh repentance is uh, uh coming back into alignment or or coming back home mm -hmm similar to the right. uh, the prodigal son and so there is yeah. this moment in communion where you're you're man you're just coming back to what the foundation for all of this is which is jesus that's right yeah. and um and 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 remembering his his grace for us so yeah, yeah. i mean i think home to home is going to be it it doesn't mean only it but i just think that god god's renewing a sense of prayer yeah yeah the apostles teaching fellowship yeah. and breaking of bread breaking of bread oh, yeah. those then we're we're well, going to be well, good. It's, it's unity, right? It's, yeah. It's yeah. Unity. And, and it's like you said, it, it's, it, that's the, that's the definition of community. It's common unity, right? There was, there was a common unity that drew them together. And that's what the, that's how the church was established, right? Right throughout all of the earth was this idea of coming around the table, breaking bread, praying, right? Learning the scriptures, being attentive to them and being willing to be formed by them, right? Uh, not, not the idea, man's ideas, but true, yeah. you know, biblical text and scripture and directions that came, you know, it comes from this incredible book that we yeah. have, you know, which is another gift. Communion's a gift. This book's a gift. Our Rebbe, that's what I just looked up really quickly. I could be wrong, but a, a rabbi, <laughs> female version of a rabbi is a Rebbe. Oh, Rebbe. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm going to get, somebody's going to slam to me. I know I'm going to get, you know, I'm just speaking heresy over here, but I just, I couldn't enunciate it better than that. So there you go. What you got? What you got? No, I, I just love, I love hearing from you guys. I think what I keep going back to, and you sort of just touched on it earlier, Aaron, I think you were talking about it. Um, the inclusion that's present right around the table um, of who and Brandy said, like who's sitting around the table. Right. And I think that's such a beautiful and powerful reminder to us and to the church about, um, the incredible invitation and the incredible love of God that is meant for everyone, yeah. right? And it has to go beyond just like a clever hashtag or something that we just yes. said, right? But how we emotionally, physically, spiritually make room for people around the table so that they can experience the incredible love of God. And so um, I love that. That's what I'm reminded of. Um, and there's a prayer that we pray. It's another pastor that do you have it with you what you say what we pray before communion mm. oh you may have it memorized i should you think I maybe would. not um this one? yeah that's just this beautiful invitation <sighs> no, don't look at it josh no no you gotta say I'm it not. too late <laughs> so, so we pray this yeah it's uh it says this is the table of the lord mm -hmm. not the table of the church mm. Mm. So it's made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. Mm. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come. Mm. Because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. Wow. And it just, Amen. It just level, the table levels the playing field. Mm of 
uh, the Holy of Holies now is not behind a curtain, but it's it's at a shared meal uh, yes. with a, at a table, looking eye to eye with the person across from you. Um, you know, this is this is what Jesus is constantly found at is at a table or on his way to a meal or um, you know, the whole idea of heaven is that it's this gigantic party, this banquet around this this table that has so much food that nobody walks away hungry. That yeah, uh, so it's, it's it's about the table. Um, so I think that it, it you know the whole idea that Jesus that God can't look upon sin. You know, we've all heard that before. You know, God's too holy to look on sin. And the reality is, if, if we believe that, then we're saying Jesus wasn't God because Jesus spent time at the table looking eye to eye with those who didn't add up for those who couldn't make their way into the temple in order to make the sacrifices. Or, um, wow. And so he, he comes, he brings the Holy of Holies out and says, now it's here, it's with us together at the shared meal. Yeah. Wow. I, so good. I love that, man. I, I, you know, I had this thought this morning and um, I think it, I think it was probably stirred from either reappearing church or um, rumors of God. One of the two, I'm, I'm in both of those still at the moment, but Australian. You know, it, it's somewhere, uh, somewhere, yeah, somewhere it said that, you know, when the veil was torn, it wasn't so that we could have access into the throne so that the presence of God could be released to flood the earth. Mm. But this morning as I was praying, I just really felt and sensed that this, this, this Friday tonight, when the veil is torn and, and, and Jesus breathes his last, as we read in scripture, I believe right now, because the streets are just empty, oh, wow. they're just wide open and the presence of God is going to flood our streets. The presence of God is going to flood our neighborhoods. The presence okay. of God is going to flood our cities. So they're going to flood our countries. And we're going to experience a, a, an outpouring of the presence of God like never before because there's no barriers. Yeah. There's no blockages. There's nothing separating or keeping the presence of God from getting where it was designed and destined to go. I believe that the presence of God, when, the, when that veil again is torn, yeah, is going to be released in such a beautiful way that no longer do we have to come knocking at the door wondering if we have qualified ourselves to walk into the presence of God. Yeah. But we can actually just sit and wait for the presence of God to come to us. Yeah, and right. just flood yeah, our right. homes and flood our hearts and flood our lives in the most beautiful way. So and, um, and I think that's what's special about this moment is it's reminding us of that presence, that mm -hmm. spirit, that power, mm -hmm. of the whole, you know, that, that anointing, that blessing, that freedom, mm -hmm. that, that release. And I think, Brandon, you talked about this, the, the, repentant, the, the opportunity for repentance, right? That God is calling us into a place where our hearts are examined. As yeah. David cries out in Psalm 51, 10, he said, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Yeah. Mm. Open the eyes of my heart, God. That, that, that word, another version says enlighten, which means to shed light on the areas of my life. And, I, and that's, my, that's our prayer right now for our city, for our community. Yeah is that we would just take some time in the presence of God and just say that prayer, examine my heart, Lord, yeah. enlighten my heart, shed some light on the areas of my life that need to be brought into alignment, brought into formation with the perfect will of God. And if there's anything that's ill, anything that's causing me concern or decay or disappointment or depression mm -hmm. or anxiety, I bring it into light. Let your yeah. presence free me from it. Let, your, let this moment, this holy moment that we're having this weekend, yeah be an opportunity for me to be refreshed and revived in ways I've never thought possible just simply because yeah. I've allowed you permission to examine my heart. Yeah. So good. I love that prayer, Josh. It's, it's such an all inclusive prayer and not in the way of like, it covers everything. Uh, but in the way that it welcomes everyone, mm -hmm. right. no one is excluded, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, it just reminded me of Meredith and her story about her little eight year old heart of feeling the, the weight and the sacredness, but yeah. also her being, you know, able to feel like I can be included in this. Yeah. You know, Beautiful. there's no exclusions here. All are welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I think, um, now I think there's just a, such a cool presence here right now in this conversation and just in this moment. And, you know, I don't know if there's any, maybe just go around the room with any final thoughts or just encouragements, maybe maybe uh, maybe a scripture or, 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 or a revelation that you mm -hmm. want to share before we partake and pray and, and um, enjoy this moment together. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll go first. Cause I think, 
I think Josh and Morgan are leading us in the prayer in just a minute. But uh, yeah. I, 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 no, I mean, I'm he's really though. That was amazing. I, I want to do plan. that. That was, that that was that that again. Again. regardless. Uh, no, the, I think I read a book recently. You are what you love, and you train your loves. And in so many ways, um, we don't like to admit that because we like to think we are thinking people, and we're not. We're loving people. And um, so when you when you walk through a mall, you train yourself what commerce looks like. You train yourself what transactions wow. look like. You hide the trucks yeah. that bring all the stuff in, the cost that it took to get those. It's all that kind of stuff. You train yourself in a certain way. Yeah. And I think in so many ways, while we think communion can be rehearsed or religious, I think in so many ways it's training our hearts and it's training our loves for the body of Christ, training our loves for what Jesus has done. Cool. And again, it has to have form and fire. It has to have a shape and spirit for sure. Um, wow. But it, but there is a level of like, this is, this is our opportunity. Again, even like right now where you are at your house with your family or even on your own, and yeah. take a cup, take the bread. There's, you can do it more than, you know, once a week. And, <laughs> like oh also go up, get on a Zoom call and say, hey, can we take yeah. communion together? Like yeah. making okay. a moment where you're beginning to remind yourself of what Jesus has done. I think, I think that's Josh, what you just said. I mean, the idea that this is reminders that if you don't remember what God has done, mm -hmm. uh, you won't, you won't have faith for what he can do. And I think that's, the, and, and I would say even that prayer you prayed, when I understand God's grace towards me, then I'll pray a prayer like that. Mm -hmm. If I don't, okay. I don't get it. And I'm not taking communion. I'm not, under, then I won't extend that kind of grace to somebody. So wow. If I forget the grace he's given me, then I won't give the grace that he wants me to give wow, others. So so true, I, think that's, I think that's part of this communion thing, right? It's just yeah. being willing to partake yeah. so that I can be reminded I needed it. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah. And, and that he, wow. he so, good. to it. so I, I think it's, yeah. is there anything you want to add? Love that. Yeah. You wrote all Love of it. all of what y'all have said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, God, so many thoughts, right? As we're all talking, but I think, um, the biggest thing for me is the pattern, right? That, mm -hmm. that, that continual pattern, what are the patterns that we're setting in our lives? And so being in quarantine has really reminded me mm -hmm. of what it is to have patterns and are your, are your patterns healthy? Are they where oh, they yeah. should be? Like, That's wow. like right up in your face. Like you really don't love Jesus. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> well, I told Brandon earlier this week, like, I really, <laughs> I really mm -hmm. need to repent here yeah. because like, my gosh, I've, I've just been a bit off. And, and, yeah. and yeah. it's just so good to be able to set those patterns. And it's a day, I think that what? daily devotion with God, the, com mm. the communion is what mm. reminds us, okay, God, where is it in my heart, Lord, that uh -huh. is there any hidden <laughs> security? Is there any hidden um, pride? What is mm. it? Is there any unforgiveness, God? It's that wow. self-reflection to then go, okay, but God, you, you did this. Oh, yeah, you can take And it. you took yeah. this on for me. And Beautiful. what a right yeah. reminder yeah Beautiful. yeah i think that's wonderful you know to me it's i was going to say this and then you said it so beautifully but it really is that moment where we as individuals as humans are not just our own selves living in this world all by ourselves we are something to someone mm. at least something to someone uh and communion is that one moment that i am just god's child mm. you know mm. and he is my dad and he is my lord um, and so those moments, I don't have to be anything to anyone else except in those moments, examining my heart mm -hmm. and being thankful and being grateful and remembering what he's done for me almost as another launching pad, wow. you know, into Cheers. the faith for the future. Um, and so it really is the moment that it's mine. Mm -hmm. You know, we share our moments with so many people, but in communion moment, no matter how quick or extended it is, it's my moment. Yeah. Wow. So it gives you permission to be a bit selfish, you know, like, yeah. you know, for all the things we do for everyone else, this yeah. is just that moment between me and God to just reconnect and to, to recalibrate, recenter ourselves. I, you know, I think that's the beauty of grace is that grace isn't uh, something that gets us out of something. Grace mm -hmm. is actually something that replaces our sin, our pain, our hurt with himself yeah. and literally gives us the opportunity to be in his position. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like if I went right now and robbed, robbed a bank, Jesus would be like, yo, I'm going to go take the pain. I'm going to take the consequence. I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to go to court. I'm going to be sentenced to life in prison. And you get to walk away scot-free. Yeah. Like, what? Mm. Like, who does that? Yeah. Jesus. 
And that to me, that's what this does for me. It reminds me, T.D. Jake said, he said this about preaching. And I think it relates to the, the way we parent, the way we husband, the way we wife, the way we love, the way we just friend. He says, he says, wife, Aaron? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. That was, I'm sorry. Um, I'll, edit said, that uh, I'll take that. I'll edit that part out. <laughs> yeah. Edit that. Can you edit that? Uh, he said, um, he said, it's, it, it, we don't need to be better preachers. Mm. We need to learn how to be better lovers. Wow. And if we learn how to love people more and love people better, we'll be better preachers. We'll be better leaders. Yes. We'll so be better good. husbands. So we'll true. be better fathers. We'll be better wow. friends. And so I think that's what you just said, Brandon, essentially is that we're learning how to love again. And we're mm -hmm. learning how to love our neighbor again. We're learning how to love each other. But yeah. I think more than that, we're learning how to love ourselves again. And that's what this communion to me is learning how to love ourselves again. Um, wow. Rabbi and Rebbe. <laughs> I think that prayer is so I, I mean you said it and it's I was so like beautiful. I was close to tears uh, I'm <laughs> sure I'm going to be in tears in a moment when you pray it but why don't you closing thoughts and just why don't you lead us in this uh, in this holy moment hmm. Anything you want to oh I have no closing share, thoughts <laughs> Yeah. I yes no but I love hearing no. you guys share and this is beautiful yeah. moment and so we're so glad to be on with you guys but yeah over to you um well, I'll pray that prayer in just a second but in first Corinthians 10 um Paul mm. says um he, he poses two questions and he says the cup of blessing that we bless is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ the bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Mm. And we've taken those and flipped them around from questions to statements. And so we say, um, the cup of blessing which we bless is our participation in the, in the blood of Christ. And the bread which we break is our participation in the body of Christ. Wow. And so I love that participation because it, it's, um, it's together. God doesn't, you know, he is constantly doing things with people. Yeah. Uh, he chooses to partner with us. And so I think the Greek word for that participation is koinonia. It's that fellowship. It's that do this together. Yeah. And so I've, I have a prayer that I've been sitting on for a while that for communion that I just say, I just started praying, Lord, consume me as I consume this bread and this cup. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be totally consumed in him and his love wow. um, so I, I i don't know what happens when we take communion i i can't explain it and i'm okay with that yeah um i don't feel like i need to or that we mm -hmm. need to come up with an explanation jesus said do it <laughs> and so i think we should just say okay All right. yeah <laughs> so um you could take your cup and your bread or your cracker or whatever you have and um, we like to we like to take ours and dip it in, but you can do it how, however you like to do it, whatever is comfortable. But I'll pray that prayer, and then um, one more time, and then we can partake together. So this is the table of the Lord. It's not the table of the church, and it's made ready for those who love Him and for those who want to love Him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you and it is his will that you should meet him here. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. 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 Man, Amen. how um, that's the first time we've taken communion together, y'all. It is. It really was. It was. And we we captured it. It's <laughs> pretty cool. And um, for all of time. <laughs> you know, I think um, what I love about this, now, Brandon, I want I'm going to have you pray over us because, man, there's a you have a prophetic voice that uh, needs to be released, and I think. Come on. Yep. Not just for us as friends. I, I value that voice. So, yeah. so, so you, you spoke something in my life a couple of weeks, last week that, 
that really encouraged me and challenged me in, in the most incredible ways. Um, I think our churches need to hear more of that, that voice. Come on. Um, but I, if I could just say, this is what I, I believe that God is doing amongst the church. Is that here we are, three friends, not three pastors, yeah. who just happen to be trusted to lead and to care for and to shepherd God's people in our individual cities. But what we're seeing is just the body being united like never before. Come on. That's right. And um, and if and if and if I can just encourage, if I can encourage anybody who's watching this, if if you don't have this, please reach out to somebody, reach out to us. We'll help you find it. Yeah, absolutely. There is nothing that replaces this, the, the sanctity of friendship, the yeah. beauty of friendship, the vulnerability, the trust, the, uh, the ability that any one of you could walk in my home and I would literally tackle you and love on you and embrace you because you're my brothers, you're my friends. Your kids could show up at our front door at any hour of the night and I would take them in as my own. Um, that is the church. And I think that's what that will be. <laughs> Slides are cheap. Just saying. That's right. Remember what you said. They were right. right. uh, recording for Trading Purpose. Hey, you know what? You're getting a real picture of our conversations because I can't shut up when I need to shut no, up. No, you can't. But you know what? That's what we love about you. That's prophetic. So I just, I just wanted to encourage people who were pathetic, prophetic, one or the other. Um, just, I, I wanted to just encourage people that this is, this is, this is so good, and yes. this is what the church was meant to be. This is what Acts two is, Mayor. This is, this is the fellowship, and why we're not together physically, man. Gosh, I, I can sense our spirits together, mm -hmm. our, our lives are knitted together, our families are knitted together, and. And that's what I think the church is meant to be. And so if this is a picture of it, gosh, sign me up. I'm all in. And I pray that over our cities. I pray that over our communities. I pray that over the people in our, our yeah. churches that they would find and sense this type of church community being yeah. birthed out of this season. So yeah. preacher, man, prof prophesy. Oh, I'm a prophet, prophetess, rabbi, rabbi. rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta, cut, we, we gotta get y'all's nicknames. Okay. We're just a talent. Oh. It's a talent. Hey, I'm in. I'm in on that. Um, hey, yeah, uh, we love you guys. Thanks for doing this. Uh, yeah. I knew we didn't do it in 15 minutes, but I'm so, I'm just so down. Okay, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Uh, and we could have talked for another hour and a half. I do. We could. Sure. Uh, we do love you. Thank you for all the kind words, and and we're excited about this. Let me pray. Yeah. Uh, Lord, I thank you so much for uh, this, these friends. Um, Gosh, it's just a breath of fresh air in all of this madness. And uh, thank you for these relationships. And um, Lord, I pray over, uh, over anyone who's watching, anyone who's partaking, anyone who's taking communion together, that we are the body of Christ together. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jesus, when you said it to your disciples, you said it to us as well, uh, right. that we are the body, that we are coming together, that we are a partaking of who you are and your identification with us and our identification with you. And so I pray in this moment, we sense that, we know that, that you are with us. Mm -hmm. And let communion be a reminder of that, that you are with us. And mm -hmm. what you have done is done and finished, and it has been done and will never be undone. And so, God, I, I pray that as they watch and as they partake with their family or just on their own, or even if they call up a buddy and say, I want to take communion, that may be oh. weird or strange, but God, yeah. I pray it's powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lord, I pray you bless them. I, I pray that this weekend, yeah, right. over Easter weekend, Lord, I pray that lives are transformed forever. That's right. And uh, mm -hmm. when we do so, seeds of revival and the fellowship of the saints, yeah. the breaking of bread, uh, uh, adherence to the apostles' teaching, uh, God, and yeah. pray. Oh, God, I, I thank you that we're going to see those seeds so revival in our cities and our churches and all around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Beautiful. Love hey, you guys. Love you guys. Online. Go get some wine, have have communion. Yes. Spend time with family and friends. Get on a Zoom call. Get into uh, lean into a church this weekend. Find yes. find one real quick. Your church. If I kiss now, it's gonna look so I don't know. It's <laughs> the... All right. Oh, there you go. All right. Oh, <laughs> Love you guys. Hey. We'll talk to you soon. Love y'all. Love y'all. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.